What is up everybody? I'm No Lux Given here with your afternoon snap and today we're going to be talking about Odin in Marvel Snap which is a really cool card when you first get started into the game and turns out it's still a pretty powerful card as you make your climb to infinite in some of these really powerful decks. In this deck, Odin copies some very, very powerful abilities from six cost cards like Leader, which is super annoying. Leader is an incredibly oppressive card, in my opinion. I know there are some differing opinions out there, but Leader's way too good. And the fact that you can go turn five Leader and then turn six Odin copy Leader, if you just grab a little bit of ramp somewhere in there, is absolutely crazy. So that's what we can do in this deck exactly with Electro being that little bit of ramp. And one thing that I wasn't sure of, still a little bit confusing. I'm gonna go ahead and snap because I think I understand how this works. I thought maybe Clintar would activate consuming our Electro and then Starlight Citadel would swap the positions of the various locations. Turns out it's either like random or the opposite of that or Starlight Citadel always happens before Kalintar, but I don't know. They both say after turn four. So I didn't know which one was going to happen first. I thought we would be safe to play like this. Now this would be absolutely devastating basically either way, but it would be really devastating if Clintar swapped over and consumed our claw, and then we lost that going on, that ongoing ability. Uh, it's still going to be not super pleasant for us as it's going to hop over into that third location and eat our sunspot, but well, it could have been worse. We are at least going to combine all of those cards in location one into a symbiote which gives us a lot more room to leader and then Odin that leader. We can do this in any place now, including over in Kalintar, and that is where I'm ultimately going to wind up putting that. We are winning in both of the other two locations, so as long as we leader in both of those other two locations each turn, we will maintain that lead. And that lead is also really, really important. Priority is really, really important with this deck because that means we get to activate our Odin before my opponent has any means of disrupting us. And that is, of course, going to be really powerful as well because now we're going to be winning in Kalintar and we're going to be winning in both of the other two locations with the exact same plays as my opponent. So feeling pretty good about our chances on this one, but my opponent is going to snap back. They've got some tricks up their sleeve too. But like I said, it won't really matter with the fact that we have priority, though this one is still very, very close, as we'll see here in a second. I'm going to flip over Odin, revealing Arrow plus Demon. And then Arrow is going to move my Odin over, which means that I tie my opponent over in the Starlight Citadel after they reveal their Mysterio. A really, really close one, but we get the win on Differential, winning in 10, uh, winning by 10 in Shadowland, and my opponent only wins by seven in Kalintar. So really sweet one. Let's take a look at some more. One really important concept that I always bring up when showcasing this deck is the concept of priority, which is super, super important, especially in this deck with a lot of on reveal effects being able to flip over your cards before your opponent just gives them a lot less opportunities to disrupt you with cards like Arrow and Cosmo. You just don't have to worry about that. So that's why we play Ebony Maw, even though it means we can't add or play additional cards to that location in the future. We can add cards to that location. And basically every other card in our hand right now affects the vault still. Scorpion's gonna mean that cards that they play there later potentially have less power. And then Magneto, Doctor Doom, and Arrow all influence multiple lanes in a lot of really fun ways. So I think that we've got some good tools here. We're gonna be able to curve out nicely with Doctor Doom, then Arrow, then Magneto. At least that's the plan right now, though. This is an Odin video. Uh, so we are going to be looking at Odin on the final turn as well, just to spoil it a little bit. And that is going to help us add even more power to the Vault. Right now, my opponent's winning the Vault. So they're feeling pretty good. But on turn five, we're gonna draw that Odin. So now I'm feeling pretty good as well. I'm gonna go ahead and snap a 
little bit risky. My opponent could have a Killmonger and blow up everything that we've done. But short of that, I think that we are looking pretty good here in the final turn. I'm gonna throw an arrow, which will force my opponent to play into Necrotia. And then next turn, we will Odin that arrow, make them play into Necrotia again, and then also make Doom Bots at those other two locations. So this was just a really, really big Odin game. Definitely had to throw this one into the Odin video. And uh, we'll see what my opponent comes up with. They're going to snap back. So they've got some spicy things cooking as well. Uh, but I think that we're going to be a little bit more powerful because we are just going to force them into that one location. We'll see how it goes, though. We are going to arrow over my opponent's wave which completely nullifies any additional power that they would have gotten from that. Uh, so that is really sweet. And then this turn, like I said, we're just going to Odin onto that arrow. And that should be pretty strong for us as well. That will force them into Necrotia with whatever they play off of Wave. And then we'll be able to easily win those other two locations. Just have to dodge the Killmonger. But if we can do that, then I think we've got a really good shot to win. And even with Killmonger... I think that we would probably win this game, even if my opponent had played a Killmonger here, uh, because we would just have more power in Necrotia. Odin and Arrow are still really big cards, and then they would destroy my Symbiote and destroy my Ebony Maul, but they would have nothing in Kalintar, and we would win on Differential. Now, what my opponent is actually going to do, if they eventually decide to play it out here, I guess they are debating between some options, but they are going to throw down... Oh, wow, it took them a while. Okay, um, here we go. They are going to play two cards, which means one of them is a She-Hulk, but all of their cards are going to Necrotia. So we win, or at least tie Clintar. Oh no, we'll win because of the Doombot. What am I saying? So we definitely won this game. Uh, they flip over Arrow. The important thing that I wanted to pick up on here is that if their Arrow had flipped over first, my Odin moves over, and then I don't get that additional Doombot, and I don't get that additional Arrow activation, which isn't the biggest part of that there, but it would have countered my Doctor Doom. That's the important thing to note. Instead, we had a cosmic victory for eight cubes. And this is a short, cute one that I wanted to showcase just to wrap some things up here. We are winning in Monster Metropolis and Lechugia. So I want to keep it that way. We're going to arrow. My opponent tries to Iron Man over into the Metropolis. I say, no, you don't. You are Iron Manning over in Muir Island, and you're going to keep winning Muir Island as we Odin that location as well, just to make sure that my opponent is only winning that one location and we get to win the other two. This is a pretty straightforward play with Odin and Arrow, but still a lot of fun uh, and just a quick one here to finish the video off. But that is going to be it for me today, guys. So thank you very much for watching. I'm no luck's given. Peace.